team is too surprised right now. Yeah, I actually think the first to pick the brute because they have second pick, it sets up for like an amazing last pick usually, which they won with Miracle. They do take the Wyvern. Yeah. Honestly, Wyvern and Phoenix are kind of similar. I mean, obviously they're both like flying things, but like the team fight. Yeah, it's very, very strong. It also okay. can allow them to stall. If they do think the secret's setting up for a push lineup, then they can use, the, of course, the Splinter Blast and also the Curse to be the best benefit to delay that for the Broodmother to take over. Ten yeah, seconds. Curse is quite good against Chen early yeah. on. We've seen the Wyvern used in a couple of different lanes. I, did so I would mostly assume that this one would be Kuroki, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It doesn't strike me as a mind control. It does, does it? Yeah. But Pakna, mind control Pakna could come out. I think that's the one that I'm looking at, the Pugna versus the Necrophos. Mm -hmm. You want to have that counter. I think it's either Pugna or Batrider. Those are the two that I uh, want to see. I think I want to my control. Why that wasn't banned. It's, it's pretty good against Chen, too, because you actually just outrun him. Like, you see him just run away. Yeah. Very hard to actually reach a Pugna. What's his movement speed, level one? 335? Three, three, yep. Yeah, little fast skeleton. It looks so funky when he just walks away. I don't know why he's so fast. <laughs> It feels so good when you have you see an enemy pudge, pudge with boots and you're faster than him without it. Ooh. Earth Shaker. That's the big Yapsu play hero. That's the way to, you know, kill that brood in the mid game. If you actually ever find it, I mean, even an invincible or anything is amazing. And a blood seeker, blood seeker by But well, that could be off lane, could be carry. Yeah. Could be mid lane, could be off lane brood. The Earth Shaker chant rings around the Rogers arena. It is packed in here. It is packed in here. Well done for getting in. Never been so full in the morning, I think. Mm -hmm. So the Bloodseeker, you can put a lot of pressure on the other lanes with the Wyvern as well as the uh, Broodmother. So the Thirst stacks in theory, should be sticking up pretty high early on. Mm -hmm. I do feel like Necker is one of those series that's pretty good at blowing up a Bloodseeker. I'd love to see them get some burst damage to, you know, scare the Bloodseeker away from being able to just run in and try and just hold his ground and fight them. I mean, just shake a necro, and in general, they just blow up anyone. Like, yep. from full health to half, and you just get ulti, and you're dead. There's not really much to, to do about it. Oh! I'm lost, though, because he's one of the best heroes against Bloodseeker in lane. He lanes very well against Brood, and if you ever get one item, Brood is actually quite scared of him as well. But it's, it's, it's always important to have a catch for the Brood, too. You can't just have these, yeah. these heroes that kill his spiders, because Brood will just... He's too fast with his webs, he farms your ancients. If you can't catch him, you're just never going to deal with him. I mean, the two major ones, Storm and Bad Rider, because even if you run up a cliff, you don't really care. You can't really hide from, from those kind of heroes. How much is Storm? I feel like Storm's won a lot on the main stage, right? I mean, Sumer is 6-0 with it. Yeah, that's... And mid one, of course, is an amazing Storm Spirit, too. Mm -hmm. The thing is he has to con be concerned with his Thea Spirit, though, and also that laning phase. Yeah. He can get punished and killed quite a lot, just a roll with some spiders adding up. And Brew can, of course, build into a fast Orchid. Yes, yeah. that might be the build this game. Yeah. We could see the, like, the fast Yules or something on Storm as a counterplay. The first item, uh, Yules on Storm, it's... Maybe Kaya into Yules. Kaya into Yules. Yeah. It's, it's really like something you hate on Storm, though. If yeah. you have to item us into Yules. But this game, he will have to, like, for sure. They have way too many silences. I feel like there's a good chance Chen plays around mid lane very early on. Like, those first couple levels when Brood is weak. Because Brood level 1, 2 is not a very strong laner. If Chen can send that first creep mid, secure mid one's lane, then you're looking at Storm actually being on a counter the Brood. Yeah. Mana burn creep or the shockwave creep. Any, I mean, yeah, or one of the golems just throws some boulders or something. Whatever it is. Yeah. Just have a little bit. Yeah. There's a lot of useful creeps you can send there. But yeah, Liquid is not even confirmed that they have a Bloodseeker or Brute middle yet. They could still mix it up as well. Pick a very strong hero against Storm. What do you think uh, the safe laner is likely to be for Seeker? Oh, I mean, it could be also an offlaner. Yeah, it could on the be Necro safe lane, yeah? Yeah. What, what does their lineup lack right now? Their lineup lacks... I would say just like burst kind of damage. Because right now they have a lot of disables, a lot of ways to initiate. But they don't really have the damage. They have nothing to hit buildings as well, really. Yeah. yeah it's just the Chen. That's what I was thinking as well. I was thinking they might just do something like the Terror Blade. Oh, they actually banned the Drow. That uh, would have been, been good amazing one. for them. Yeah. yeah, that would have been really good. It's not really a good, not good against Brute, but against the lineup as a whole. It does feel like it has a lot of synergy. Yeah. Clapping going on. That's the in itself. I just love looking around. All left it. by the Earthshaker. Oh, wow. It's a tense moment. We're yeah. still waiting for the younger Earthshaker, by the way. Yeah. Hasn't happened yet. 
Okay, so you could need some some sort of objective taker. Maybe even the Ursa. Is Ursa banned? Ursa is banned. Ban, yeah, they took it up. Oh, TP sounds banned. very risky, even TP though they played it a few times. Yeah. They can get punished really early if they pick TP. Klinks is out, of course. Yeah, like the revenge carry is not there. Draw is out. There's not too many okay. speed options right now. Like, Arc Warden sounds a bit too greedy. Needs a bit too much farm. Arc One Storm, Necro. Maybe they do Necro safe lane and get like a, a Fury on or something for the yeah. off lane. I mean, they will, they will have to do something, and obviously they think very hard about it. I mean, they could still go for a Pugna themselves, too. Yeah. It'd be a yeah. little bit, you know, you have these three in cores, which isn't the greatest, but then you can apply pressure a lot. But they all either pretty, side. They, they, they scale pretty well. The many Enchantress. Ah, they go down. Is off lane okay. Necro? Safe then? I safe lane Storm. storm? Okay. Right. They're, gonna be, they're gonna be, they're gonna try to get the matchups. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, I imagine they don't have a set lane in mind for all these heroes until they see what Liquid's maybe doing. It seems a bit greedy with an Alchemist and a Storm on the same team. Mm -hmm. But if you get through... If you get through, though... Then, then you're going to have a very good spot. Even the Necro, too, they don't have that, like, mid-game playmaker. Like, Shaker's like, he needs a blink, but if you have a bad early game, Shaker's not going to have a blink. Like, if this game goes bad for Secret at the start, I just don't see a way for them to come back yeah. here. And there's the bad. Right, I, right, I, yeah. I, I knew it had to be either the bad or the Pugna. Bad or Pugna, yep. Okay, draft concluded then. Our two teams have their five hero lineups. They are ready to do battle, but just before they do battle, let's get some X Factor stats from the hands. Thank you very much. Team Liquid and Team Secret, Puppy and Kuro, two of the founding members of Team Secret, over 500 career wins together as a duo. They are 29 and 28 against each other in pro matches. Puppy has that one game edge. Team Liquid is competing in their 300th land game together as a five-man duo. They have over 200 wins and that 69.2% win rate, that is the highest ever for a squad in over 100 career land matches. Team secret on the other side they have turned their ti around with early tower pressure in 18 group phase games they took only one tower before the 10 minute mark here on the main stage they've taken seven in seven games including the fastest tower of the tournament yesterday and they're led today by the puppy chen the most played player hero combination in ti history 14 8 record he is going to force the action today two eu super powers Powers collide, and here are two super powered casters, Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nahaz and Rogers Arena. A lot of history, a lot of love, a big match, and it all comes down to this best Can of three. You feel it in here today. The crowd has come prepared for an epic battle to get things started. And I, can't I simply can't wait. I think this is such a greedy play from Seeker. I can't <laughs> believe they went for the Alchemist versus the Bloodseeker. I thought there's no way. Yes, it's great versus Brood. But we've seen that matchup before, and the Bloodseeker has absolutely destroyed. This is going to be such a game of finding the right matchup. Maybe a little bit of the musical lanes going on here. No, definitely. And that's something you got to watch for early on. We've seen so many times either the Bloodseeker or the Brood uh, completely dismantle this Alchemist. Occasionally, you can get a couple of those spiders in there as well. But the other thing that I want to watch for is this GH Earth Spirit. Him running out here early on and Ace saying, hey, everybody, the all chat might be around in this game. It's uh, a possibility. I think Ace can hear the fans out there. So he, just, <laughs> he wants them cheering nice and loud. Well, a lot of things to watch for in this match, for sure. I am really curious to see how the matchup of the four positions works their way out. Uh, what do you think? Because oftentimes you see in the early game, an Earthshaker uh, might end up getting a little bit destroyed by an Earth Spirit if you can find the right angles. What, what do you feel about the, those two heroes? Yeah, we used to talk a lot about, uh, in the era of the position four, it was all about mashing up against each other. Uh, so we always had Tusk and Earth Spirit kind of doing battle with one another. If they encounter each other, roaming around, one would usually uh, take that battle. But uh, Earthshaker, not the best in that simple 1v1, right? Yapsor, uh, in the early game, just wants to be coming into your lane, hiding in the fog, and creating a kill opportunity there for you. And that's sort of a mix-up where, like, you're not expecting this sudden stun out of nowhere. That's very important in these lanes that are going to be extremely delicate. Oh, and here we go. As the horn sounds and they head up to the high ground. Oh, going to move on in. GH tries to seal away the rune. It's going to get it. So Liquid coming out on top three at the beginning. Nicely played there. I mean, obviously, so important with an Alchemist on your team, you want to make sure that you get the maximum value out of those possible. And Earth Spirit able to deny one of those. So it does look like it's going to be the Storm Spirit versus the Broodmother in the mid lane. This matchup, how do you feel about it? 
Uh, probably the best one they can hope for. It's not too bad, right? Uh, they're both able to head to the jungle. They both have certain kill options versus one another. Storm Spirit has abnormally high armor for an int hero, so he tends to do all right. That's fair. And down bottom, of course, we're seeing the Bat Rider a little bit of a revelation after being very absent in the group stages. He's been seen more and more often on this main stage and is going to be trying to do battle down here bottom with the Alchemist and put whatever hurt he possibly can onto him. Yeah, and how about that start there from Puppy, beginning with a Blightstone in that bottom lane to try and help with the minus armor, see if they can bully these two out of here. You can't let a Bat Rider get out of control. And in terms of stuns control for the hero, they're in a dangerous spot. You know, you don't typically think as a, an alchemist that you're going to be going into lane versus a bat rider. You have no way to dispel that sticky napalm. Yeah, this miracle's just going to take some punches here from Fada. There's a creep wave in, but obviously Bloodseeker, very strong laner, and with the Blood Rage should be able to keep himself topped off after the fact. As we did see the body block down bottom to make sure that Chen couldn't get that first round of creeps. Always so important for a Chen to have him. Mid lane, mid one. Just gonna deal with the aggression of the Brood, already level 2, and starting to spawn those spider links. Probably a lot of couriers come to that mid lane. Constant reach back and forth, trying to keep an edge there, and uh, two more mangoes now for Matu as he chomps one right away. Autumn lane, lane dealing a little bit of damage. There's four stacks of the sticky napalm, and as they go underneath the tower, Ace looking for the kill, they're gonna find it, but he might be punished. Mind control gets the return. Nice kill there. Up and Ace, but... Still, uh, taking down the Alchemist like that. Definitely someone who wants to be snowballing much harder than he is when a Bat Rider is killing. Only six last hits so far at the two minute mark. Great play by both position fives in the lanes, though. Just uh, controlling these waves, allowing heroes like uh, Miracle there to kind of bully Shaker. And another pull up top there for Kuro. So it's just going to bring more uh, creeps under the tower up top for them. Yeah, and you're perfectly fine with that, the Bloodseeker. It's like the perfect thing that you want to make happen. Matumaman is starting to build up a little bit of a Spiderling army here. What do you want to try and do in this matchup against Storm Speed? Are you trying to do that thing where you cut behind the tower? Or are you looking to just sort of eventually try and go for a kill on him before you get six? Yeah, you definitely want to kill before six, and that'll be reliant on a rotation from GH. He's already heading there now. Gonna try and use an illusion rune, but uh, there's Radiant Vision down bottom, so they already saw this coming. Good recognition, playing it safe. Storm will hide out in the jungle for a moment. Tumbaman will try and get some chip damage into that mid-tier one tower as top lane Kuro spots out the Absor and Fada. But Miracle, he's been kind of unimpeded. Fada's getting a lot out of the Necropost. Yeah, this is great because uh, typically like people really like this Necropost versus the Bloodseeker. You can just uh, deal with his sustain. You try and just get as much damage to your death pulse as possible when he comes up with his Blood Rage trying to heal. Wow. Already some damage onto Fada. A good fissure is going to create a little bit of separation. They back off. Tense moments early on, and as you can see, mid lane, mid one, potentially going to be in some trouble here, depending upon if they feel the inkling for a kill. And now oh, they test waiting it. Waiting so long. Now his position <laughs> revealed. He has to leave now. And there was a save coming from Yapsor too, but uh, Yapsor and uh, Kuro, that, that's like the, the battle, right? Uh, maybe Bloodseeker and Necropost, that tends to go a little bit Necropost's way, but in terms of the supports in the lane, you'd much rather have a winner Wyvern than an Earthshaker, and that's going to give the Miracle the edge as those levels start stacking up on each support. Autumn Ruin looks like that'll be stolen away by GH, but once more, it is spotted by the Radiant, so... Too many shocks there for the mid lane. Top lane, Fada again in some trouble. They're going to force out the stick charges, and then down bottom as well, there was some action going on. So they force back the Alchemist, GH shows up. They also have the damage now onto the Puppy Chen. In some trouble, the roll forward, looking for the kill. Wasn't able to find the stun, and that's going to be another kill. GH picking it up, but a turnaround? Ace? Yeah, he needs to play that safe. Yeah, he doesn't go for the acid or anything either, so... He'll wind up getting it, and he also likely sees the Arcane Rune and knows that roll is probably not too far away. So pretty hard to get the kill. They're going to bring me now here. I know Firefly's on cooldown, but it's not for much longer. The stomp follow-up, they throw out the stun as well. The follow-up is there for Mind Control, who's gonna go down. The three-hero rotation gets them the kill. Meanwhile, Matu just doing brood things here. I think Matu is one of the best brood mothers. Oh, Fada. Trying to go for the bounty run. In some trouble, though. He's silenced. He's taking a lot of damage. Fada, is he gonna go down? He can't survive. No stick charges. Gotta do it for Team Alpha. And GH, look over here. He's stuck as well. He's fully wrapped around in the fissure. Tries to go for the stun. The roll. He actually makes it out. All right. Wasn't able to get the block off there. Never too worried. 
But uh, yeah, Matu, one of the best things he does on Broodmother is he just constantly goes and dies. Oh, play. jeez, puppy. And not, not quite what he wanted there, I don't think. Yeah, got to play that safe. And mid one also very low on mana. You look at this aggression that's coming right now from Liquid and all over the place. They're just running at secret, trying to find the kills. And maybe they've ran a bit too deep as they turn it back around. Those creeps do a lot of damage as they've fully wrapped around on GH, but they're not quite doing the deeps that they need. But they do find the kill eventually. Puppy's going to pay with his life, but can they get a kill on a Yapsor now as well? They've got two stacks of the Sticky Napalm. Brings up a third one as well as they're diving over the top of him. And Liquid finding another. Open AI Caught him well, salving through the tower damage. And uh, I like the fact that Puppy used the creeps to help schedule the kill to guarantee it for Ace, but losing two to mind control is just getting this bat off to a very good start. This is the type of thing, too. You draw so much of the aggression down there to the bottom lane, and then you're suddenly going to be able to pressure that mid tier one tower. They're trying to turn this around, though, and get themselves a kill onto mind control as Yapsar goes forward for it. Mid one also looking, but it's very hard to actually fully commit onto this Bat Rider as he weaves his way through the force, not breaking down that tree. Mid one wants to get the kill. There's still five stacks here of Sticky Napalm bottling through it as well. Mind control gets hit by the Fissure and eventually is going to be brought down. Yeah, at the same time, Oh, mid what? Excuse me? Oops. Wow, flame break. Got him in the end. At the same time, there was also a kill in the mid lane there. Matu just juking around the tree line, making uh, some assistance from GH. Rotating in there, very well worth it as they secure that kill. He's been so good, the spiders. They tried to bring the alchemist in, kill all these spider links, and get a bunch of gold for him, but instead he just feeds away a death. And now the battle is going to continue to go forward as they just dismantle. That puppy Chen and GH trying to run away from the moment from Ace, but they, they can't really do anything. And on the other side, Yapsor is going down as well. Liquid are just tearing them apart. We have 13 kills in the first seven and a half minutes. Feels like uh, the mid lane, the bottom lane going crazy. And meanwhile, it's just a, a peaceful farm battle up top, but... Oh, is Not he the really going to go in again? It happens over and over again. They want to find these kills on the Spiderlings, but they do bring down that Alchemist. And now GH also ran after. So a one for one, but that's your Alk dying at seven and a half minutes. Yeah, and we we've been looking, maybe we've been looking bottom, but if you find Fada right now, he is level four. There is an extreme experience advantage right now for Secret. It's about 3k, or sorry, for Liquid, it's about 3k at the moment. And you see right here as well, you know, you can feel that almost it feels like desperation to make something happen. And mind control looks like a target oh, that you can take down. We got a down. rupture here on a haste and storm spirit. All right, trying to run away. The, the broodmother can go up those hills as well as they chase forward, trying to find the kill. He needs to kill them off as quickly as possible, but they do get to the shrine. And that's going to keep mid one alive. So much pressure exerted here at almost no cost for liquid. You can just see the story right now in the net worth. Three top for liquid. And even supports are getting a lot as well. GH is almost ahead right now of the Necrophos. It's only 400 gold behind him. They rotate Kuro down here with mind control. How are you going to go on a Batrider backed up by a Winter Wyvern? You're, you're very worried about a, a sudden slow from the Wyvern. You're just dead. They don't have the heroes to deal with this Batrider. So if you're secret now, how do you get your legs back under you? How, what, what do they need to try and accomplish over the next couple of minutes to stem the bleeding? Yeah, it has to be about the Storm Spirit and just trying to get level 6 on Fada. Try and create some scythe kills. And they need to be so cautious about mind control. It looks like he's building it towards those drums. He wants to snowball hard. He's not looking for a blink build. He wants to be up in their faces for the first 15 minutes of this game. And mind control. He is eventually Big going kill. to drop as well. They're saving that kill for the Storm Spirit. As you said, make sure that they get him off to a good start. Yeah, that's exactly what they need at the moment. Try and slow down that bat. They've basically completely evacuated the mid lane at this stage. I mean, Storm Spirit has often been that hero that can just eventually win you the game if you can get to the late stage. Yeah. I mean, that, that's your level 8 bat rider. We also have a level 8 Bloodseeker and a level 10 Broodmother at the moment as Matsu building into this combat build. Soul Ring right in. Yeah, so desperate, deadly. And again, you look up top. Fata gets that level 6. There is a lot of heroes in the top lane, though. Miracle and GH. They got plenty of vision here for Secret, so they see this. Centaur's in there first, maybe try and create an opportunity. The stun, it goes out. The follow-up stun, they got a third as well. They managed to hit two with it. Yapsor gets to the dare as well with the Enchant Totem. And now the rocket's going to be thrown forward. Yapsor falling low. They managed to get the kill with the blood right, but Miracle right away. It is going to end up the same uphill. They take oh. down Fada. The miss uphill of Miracle. He somehow gets there. Are you kidding me? He get, ran up the stairs into the miss uphill.
that was some beautiful execution from Secret. Sure, he has you know, very fine movements, perfect stuns, one after another, but sometimes the simple things in life are the best. You drop that blood right, you run really fast, and they come out on top of that fight. 10 minutes in, a 4,000 gold lead, 6 to 12. And Liquid not looking back as they are going to continue to accentuate this lead that they've built. Yapsor has the Echo Slam, but there's an Invis GH right next to him. You'd love to try and go in this, but with Tumbleman, he's not even going to bring his spiders. They realize that that's the threat potentially to turn it back around. Echo Slam on it too, though, with the creeps nearby. They turn it around onto a Tumbleman. Is he going to go down? If they could find that kill, it'd be great. But it looks like that's going to be the end of it. Very disappointing, I'm sure, but at least they, they're pushing back somewhat here. But doesn't it feel like for the past five minutes or so, it's only Liquid Heroes farming lanes? Yeah. Bottom, there's just a Spat Rider. Top, there's a Bloodseeker and a Broodmother just running in between camps and farming that mid lane. They're falling far behind here on Secret. And remember, that's an Alchemist lineup on the Radiant side. A 5k net worth is actually quite a bit bigger. Yeah, this is uh, dismantling if I've ever seen it. Liquid just looking clinical in this game at number one and showing why they've been forcing teams to go for the first phase ban of the Brood. And it's all those other pieces too, like GH on that Earth Spirit that can run in and make some kills happen afterwards. Mind control now. Bottom lane, just gonna firefly, see if we can find anybody. And Fata gonna be kicked after the fact. Nice combo there, as they are going to. Oh, Reaper Sight, turn around! Fata makes it happen, and now the jump board for more mid one trying to find a kill on Akuro. They threw up the Winter's Curse, they are gonna be able to take down Puppy, but it comes at a hell of a cost. If they can get everyone out of here, though, they could be pretty happy about this. That's a lot of experience coming back their way, but a 1k XP swing, 660 gold as well. Alchemist. Oh, kills there too. Yeah, not bad. You take a look. Again, oh, if that yeah, miss. That just, uphill miss oh. at the top of the screen. Just barely gets to the top of the stairs. Still oh, feeling good about it. Throw out another silence. The kick is there, but mid one is as well. And he's got his eyes set on this tasty Earth Spirit who is going to go down yet again. Fada picks up that kill. This is buying some space now for Ace to get into that Radiance. Dyer's middle tower. It does feel like we've seen a big shift in the momentum, at least a little bit, as that net worth lead is starting to be reduced. Well, uh, no matter how bad it gets, we'll always have uh, Chen and Storm Spirit, you know, zipping around, getting sent back to base, trying to keep the man high on mid once we keep going through these next ganks. Dyer's top tower. Of course, Storm Spirit is certainly a hero that we've seen in the past come back from some pretty big deficits. Yeah, Earth Spirit or Earth Shaker as well. This is a hero. You get into that blink data or, or a decent timing, and all of a sudden, that Broodmother is not going to be living. Tough uh, for sure for Yaps with this game. Once again, the lanes have seemingly been dominated just all the time by Liquid. They found a little bit of breathing room here now, though, as they're hunting down bottom for mind control. Fata. A bit too fast. Initiated in the top lane, bringing in the Earth Spirit as well. Actually thinking about going onto this. The silence is there. They have the follow-up with the blood right. He can't get anything off. Just taken down in mind control. It's gonna be assaulted in the bottom lane. They go there for the root as well as the stomp follow-up. And even through the flaming lasso, they are not gonna be able to stop the kill. It's a really good find based on good vision there from Team Secret. But Matu, he wants something. I'll have to back off. Look how good Matu's been with these spiders too. He just keeps them so far away from the Alchemist. If he's not sure he can commit for a kill, he wants to make sure he's not feeding any gold over to that Radiant. 11 to 14. 1,000 gold lead for Liquid. This is still, as you mentioned earlier, an Alchemist game. You want to be ahead on that hero, but Secret have been able to have some signs of life in the past couple of minutes, and maybe getting a 15-minute bounty rune would be that extra little bit that they need to start that comeback. Uh, one problem they might have with the side of Secret is that they could certainly roast relatively early now for Team Liquid. If they have the medallion on the Broodmother, pretty easy to tank it up and uh, decent enough damage in combination with the Bloodseeker that that's always going to be a threat. So they can start playing around that top half of the map, trying to find lone heroes on bottom. Speaking of a lone heroes, hero, yeah. Invisroon will see GH. No sentries nearby to worry about. They realize they need to be a little bit careful. Mind control netted. They have the damage amplification as well. The silence is going to be there with the Winter's Curse and maybe an opening as they're laying into their own teammates. The stun to follow up. Can they kill off mid one in time? He's zipping away, trying to get out of there. The reapplication of the Magnetize. He's dropping low, but it looks like he is going to complete that TP and get out. Nice use of the invulnerability there too, while he's TPing. Trying to extend that for as long as possible to make it back home. 
However, that was supposed to be sort of a, a comeback play there from Secret, right? You're scouting out, you're hoping Batrider's gonna get greedy, go for these creeps, and then you just simply turn it around uh, using the uh, Invis Storm Spear. But at the very least, they force out the Winter's Curse, which means that a Roche fight is unlikely for but, the next bit. And you can see the net worth lead, part of the reason, because all Liquid got run. literally all of the bounty runes. The glowing ghosts. <laughs> Bleh. They got a couple. That's quite a bit. On those ones stuck on the low grounds. Mid one will find it. These Matu has just been playing in this area for so long. Uh, it looks like it is on the mind of Team Spears. They have that Seder Mind Stealer inside the pit. Willing to mana burn any foe who dare enter. That is a very early KB here for Bloodseeker. Wow. Yeah, that is incredibly early. So, farm speed, not that great. Want to fight us? It's definitely not good for Secret. And that will certainly help them secure the Roach Pit. Throw out the nice there, and as you can see, Dota plus one probability, very even right now. Okay. Respecting the Alchemist, much like the Spectre, Dota plus is a big fan. He's getting closer and closer to that Radiance. Fada is not really necessarily caught up, but he's at least getting some amount of levels. Now it feels like Liquid, not content with the way that the game is going at the moment. They're going to try and take down Roshan, see if they can build up even more of a lead. Curious to see if uh, Secret even want to think about dealing with this. I would guess unlikely. You're going into an Earth Spirit and a Winter Wyvern. Just an absolutely fantastic team fight coming from the two supports. And that's without even mentioning the possibilities of a lasso with this extremely tanky Hood Batrider. In the meantime, as Roche is going to fall, Kuro will push out the bottom lane. And we'll see what Liquid want to try and do with this Aegis. Maybe secure themselves a couple of towers. Absor. In the area as well to possibly punish this as Curl wants to get the deny on the tower and oh, he wants the zip jump it in they find him they're able to get on to Kuro mid one jumps on top of the winter's curse to turn it back around they're showing up with the earth spirit as well the stun to follow it they have the silence they got him caught with the blood right down they're gonna take two that was not worth the tower last that I don't think and mind control wants to add another to the list and Fata completely alone. There's the rest of his team running to try and catch up. They're going to go for the send back, but it's not enough. The spawn spiderlings were there. They look for Puppy now as well as Liquid just streaming forward. Not content with anything. And they're actually going to buy back another shaker. Now Matumbo Man needs to run. As he was gone a bit too far. They're going to bring in Yapsor. There's going to be the Enchant Totem for the Aegis. Now, can they turn this back around? They They've jump got the in slam. One. All right, Echo Slam to follow it. They've got him caught. Matumbo Man's going to die, and it looks like Mind Control also likely to fall. So Liquid, a big too big for the britches. Yeah, they brought all of the reinforcements there. I'm <laughs> sure they wouldn't have wasted any of their big ultimates, and Mind Control attempting to abandon him, but no TP to be found there. So Still a 6k lead for the Dire. However, that takes away their Aegis, and uh, didn't get an opportunity to use it in combination with a 10-second BKB. Still sitting there for Miracle, so it almost feels like a wasted item in some ways, right? Because like, you'd rather something that lets you farm just a little bit faster. It puts a certain threat into Team Secret for sure, and definitely made it so they couldn't challenge you at the Roche Pit, but definitely wanted to be in that fight where they actually used the No doubt about that. Yeah, this is a, a pretty big loss, I would say. Maybe just again, Liquid over anticipating how strong they were at the moment and maybe not anticipating the buybacks either, but it is going to be a smoke up now from Secret, pinged immediately by Liquid. Be very careful here. If GH is able to stay on the sidelines before these fights happen, that spirit vessel is devastating versus Alchemist and Necrophos. So hard for them to fight if he catches them. The scan is there. They realize where the rest of Secret is. Need to be careful. There's no Blink Dagger yet on Yapsor, and they're actually TPing into this with Miracle GH trying to be the bait at the start. They find the silence. Can they get it? Mid one not able to get out of there. In trouble. Going to drop as he Gotta dies run. yet again. Yapsor also ran after. Can they take him down in time as well? He's so close. He doesn't have a TP. He, he just abs wants some gold. Please let me farm. I want to be left alone, but it's going to have to be waiting in the grave. And this space for Ace at the very least. Radiance and Blink Dagger. Curl. Does not yet have the unstable concoction cooldown taken as he was kind of waiting for fights to kick off. A lift up here, Fata. They're bringing in the rest of the heroes. Mind Control wisely going to run to the east. And that means that's just going to be a stun for himself. He's still farming. He's got Radiance. Happy as a clam. But uh, they only secure one of the four bounty rooms. You've seen successful Alchemist teams. They need those bounty rooms. It's so important for helping out your team, helping out your Alk. But a 
Ace just not getting enough this game. They're gonna try once more down bot with the blink. This is a big kill if they can get it. And there's gonna be the Reaper Scythe down. Secret again back on the board. And the best part about that play is that there's no instant counter from Liquid. Like, they don't find someone out farming. They're playing pretty cautious. And I say that, now mid one is a maybe a bit too far out. Oh, the roll into the silence, into the kick, bud. Good Fissure saving the day for the moment. Mid one gets away. Bata also TPs into the mids. They are sure that there is no follow-up, but maybe going to jump forward here with the stun. Alchemist? No, not going to go for it. Pretty brave move there from mid one, but he does survive. Try and keep pressing forward after this high, a long zip up top, he catches Miracle. That's a big kill if they can get it, but it's Miracle... A very far zip though, I don't think his yeah. teammates quite have the mobility for it. I mean, he's got a BKB too, there's yeah. no chance that there's a kill. Maybe just trying to bait out a BKB charge. Yeah, potentially, hoping that uh, Miracle might anticipate some smoked up allies or something, but he actually has very deep vision near that Radiant base, you can see. So, he knows that there was no one else really around. I mean, yeah, you really just look at this liquid vision around the map and they just see absolutely everything. Is, is Matsu Radiant or Dire? Because I'm pretty sure he's been on the Radiant far more than the Dire this game. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he has conquered this half of the river. I see a couple of little spider flags around. Oh, man, and they were anticipating the elk farming off to the side, but it's not actually in the camp. Just the abusing grip. this Broodmother. Like, sentries near the Ancients to make sure they're going to keep on spawning too. Can't just block them out. His net worth towering over the Alpha right now, still, despite the secret trying to give him everything. Oh, and Puppy anticipating a ward in a different spot. That's the same one that spotted out their smoke, and now they see him all up on the high ground. Would smoke. Where do they want to go? It's again Matumba Man showing they're trying to bait it out and see if they can get an initiation. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It is still just going to be secret, playing it safe for the moment. Fata moves forward. Of course, a glyph out of the top, and no one going to respond to this, so... Mid one will get a tower, no kills here for Liquid. Overall, pretty good couple of minutes right now for Secret Ult. Let's just say that, though. Oh, and again, he did have his Blink Dagger. Yapsor wanted to use it so badly with the grip. They're going to get the silence, get the kill. Does not have any type of buyback, so if they want to pressure down a tower, they can. Yeah, and uh, on that courier is the Radiance now for Miracle. This feels like everything coming together for Team Liquid as they move on the Necro. They've got him rolled the in. Home. There's the stun. They have a silence as well. Can they break it through a time? No. The send back is there. Secret save Fada. Yeah, the Yules is such a good pick up this game to help delay for the send home and also just to ensure that he has an answer up against that Spirit Vessel. Still a 7,000 gold lead Liquid showing why they're the favorites in this one and the winter's curse on the high ground they're gonna have the follow-up with gh and the blood right as well mid one is done never stood a chance and they have another kill on a puppy they buy back on a puppy what's he gonna do in this fight he just sent back fada but they are feeling in a bad way right now as tier three towers assaulted they have vision on yapsor they spot him out can they even blow him up they immediately send those spiders back from a tumble man and they still have those BKBs. It's like fighting into an Aegis with that uh, massive ulti that has to win you the game and you have to somehow try and kill them before the Aegis, you know, before you use that big ulti. And now you're trying to force them to pop these BKBs before the Echo Slam is there or Yapsor has to have some sort of an incredible smoke play catching Liquid unaware. And it's 10 seconds on both of them. They've got the pipe on Batrider. It feels like so many of the normal avenues that you would have to get back into this game for Secret just are not there at all in this one. As Liquid, well, dotting their eyes, crossing their T's. This puppy guy has found some certain ways with Chen before. That's on the true. Main stage. He's got a pretty cheesy hero as well, the Storm Spear with the plays you can make there, so. As long as they're holding their racks, they can still feel at least okay about this game. There, there was definitely a chance. Alka's top net worth, as you'd anticipate. A smoke up as five from secret lanes are somewhat pushed out right now. Curl so close to popping that smoke. The dire just scanned. They spot him out. They're going to try and chain stun here, see if they can find this kill. The Echo Slam follow up. They kill off the Bloodseeker, but the turnaround is there with the Winter's Curse, and GH is going to have the best follow up of his life if he wants it. They throw in another application of Magnetize. BKB's out, and they are going to find that kill on to GH. Maybe, maybe the Cold Embrace are keeping him alive. GH is living. Are you freaking kidding me? They take him down, but mid one pays the price. And now Yapsor trying to escape as well. He will get out. Secret do lose too. Yeah, but they have forced Liquid back onto their own side of the map right now. The respawn timer isn't that long. They really don't want to lose Puppy here too, though. Uh, he did buy back in that last one. Centaur Tries to take the center. Me. Give him the stomp. They dodge the stomp. They're not hitting the stomp. What's happening is they find the stun onto the... Oh, the Alchemist is going to end up falling potentially as well if they have any follow-up here. No, they need to run. Liquid. 
Chased again. They have another unstable concoction in one second. But they will get Puppy away. Nice team communication there from Secret. Ace and Yaps are both rotating over just to save any sort of a secondary kill there. So I think overall that's great for Secret, honestly. They've taken down that net worth lead by a little bit. They forced them back to their side. The waves got pushed out. Look at that one on bottom. It's starting to approach that tier two. This feels pretty damn good for Team Secret. And that's the beginning. And Roshan, it's still 45 seconds away, roughly. So we are going to take another look at yeah. this. You can see there was a ward on the high ground, too, there from Secret. So they had these uh, offensive wards to try and create these situations. That's what allows you to bring someone down like that before they can pop the BKB. But uh, Liquid wisely start running away from there. It's not worth taking, like, a full-on team fight without that uh, Miracle Blood Seeker. And mid one, obviously, with the cold embrace, he feels the need to commit so heavily into it. Eventually, he does go down. 26 minutes in, only a 5,000 gold lead. The fact that this hasn't ballooned up into something more, something to be proud of for Team Secret. Radiance, Bloodseeker going back for the Manta as well, it looks like. I uh, have no doubt this game could certainly still be over in a flash. If you're very dangerous stuff here. You're still relatively under-farmed on these other Radiant heroes, and your you know, farm hero is an Alchemist. He's supposed to be there, uh, and hopefully a lot earlier in the game as Mind Control. Wants to try and crack this one open. Yeah, Zora up here. on the high ground. He takes them both. There's the full combo. Can they kill him off in time, though? They're taking down my control. He is eventually going to fall. Mid one, barely living. The send back, it keeps him alive. He can jump back into this fight afterward if he wants to, as they take down a second winner. Wyvern gone as well. Yapsor doing so much in this fight. But Tumbleman possibly going to be able to take down Fada. He's silenced for the moment. They're trying to take him down, but the stop is going to be there again. Yapsor jumps in. Mid one as well. They're taking him all down. GH in trouble as Big One spells blood and finds the kill. The last man standing falls for Team Liquid. And as if on cue, the Roshan is now ready for Team Secret. They've somehow found a way back into this game once again by beautiful vision and the execution they needed from Yapsor. And a 1,000 gold lead now into the favor of Secret. They're feeling the way that they wanted this game to go. And Roche going to fall. Liquid are stunned. My goodness gracious me, oh my, Trent. Taking a fight near the base of a Storm Spirit team is always going to be dangerous. And what a fantastic send back to get mid one prepped up to finish up the moth and bucket of that fight. Now the tier one tower now going to be assaulted in the mid lane as secret. Feel, I mean, uh, again, t talk to me about how, how much this changes in the context of the game. Well, well, first, we gotta see, look at this. It starts with Liquid, because they want to find a pick before that Roche fight. And so they're up on this high ground, their smokes break, and instantly, yeah, sorry, he knows he has to jump. Because they have to win this fight, they need to beat out those DKBs. And the send back with the Storm Spirit. I mean, Puppy's done it before with a different hero that we all know too well. And now making the plays here in the big stage yet again. Silence there, follow up, and it just up um, by a hair. And the one shocking thing about the fight, though, is that Miracle never found a chance for his BKB. I think that was the big thing Liquid were missing. That, like, so much oh. in that is just suddenly gone. So Miracle is still sitting on 10 seconds. Not what they're looking for. This BKB has just lain dormant for far too long. And look at the uh, smile on Yapsor's face. Oh, my God. They're feeling it. Well, the crowd's giving it to him right now. Oh, but Ace, he's gonna get a little bit here too. Observer Ward spots him out. Mid one though, trying to interrupt it. Great stun from GH. The position for Fieros in this game. They have the silence that's Aegis down. Can they find any more? The blood right timing, it needs to be perfect. And it's going to be, they get the silence. If there's a man that did the math, it's Miracle. No possibilities there for Secret to find themselves a saving play. And now all that momentum just starts falling down a little bit as now you'll be at nine bloodstone charges for mid one. Wow, and look at the shift, 80% now. They take a percent off for that kill, that's fine. <laughs> and now 21 to 25, feeling like we're right back into the midst of it. I mean, really now if you're liquid, you've sort of taken a huge step back because of that one big team fight. Aegis went into the favor of Secret, now it's gone. Where do you go next? Things get very strange because when you're ahead in the game with this Bloodseeker and his Broodmother, it feels like you just run over the whole map, right? Like, Batrider loves playing those games too. You just want to feel like you can appear anywhere and just suddenly get kills. But now the net worth is starting to even out a little bit. And yes, it's still an Alchemist game, but when you get to certain itemizations on something like the Storm Spirit, it is rather terrifying. Uh, I think the next big step for Secret will certainly be that BKB. If you're Liquid, 
I think you still have to press forward. You have to be not too concerned about what's been happening over the past couple of minutes. Understand you still have a little bit of a lead there, but it's those important key heroes you need to be taking down. The Earthshaker as well as the Storm Spirit. A DD picked up there from a Tumba Man. They were able to find that Storm in the last game. Last fight, rather. Unstable concoction damage up on that talent for the Alchemist, who now is streaming ahead in terms of net worth, experience up to level 20. Some scribbles here from Team Secret seem to have identified that uh, where they believe Liquid are, and they are correct. Backing up the Broodmothers. Matu pushes DD. They've consistently played in that part of the map, it's felt like. Uh, Secret have now been able to take over their own jungle. And Alchemist just going to completely avoid it, head over to the other side, check for the bounty runes, and then push out and farm those camps. As Liquid look to try and pressure the Tier 2 tower. Doctoring for now for with that Manta, he also has an answer for the Spirit Vessel, so he doesn't have to be concerned about it or anything. Try and keep his healing up. And of course, his spam of illusion. Mid one. He spots him moving in. The TP's there. Mind control. Do they find him? Electric Vortex the back out. A little bit too rich for his blood as Ace, thinking about throwing out the stun, able to oh, yes. blank away first, but they blow up a Tumba Man just in no man's land, and now they want to force this fight, but they don't have their spider. They've got Ace down on the river, though. It's so tempting. Oh, and he's they being also, set back. Yeah, they lost their gem, too, in that very first engagement. Uh, Mind Control had the first one up, and it was stolen by Yapsler, who still holds it. And again, help him get the D ward. We talk so much about momentum in this. You also talk about the way that it starts to feel when things don't go your way. Maybe a little bit too anxious to get things done there by Liquid. Just uh, not quite on the same page. It looked like trying to catch this uh, Storm Spirit. Doesn't even have like the best options for the Broodmother of this game. You know, he's, he's not playing with like a, an Orchid or something. So being that far back, clearly he thought he'd be able to just BKB and buy enough time. But Yapsor was willing to commit the Echo Slam, to make sure that wouldn't happen. Kuro, Winter's Curse is there. Mid one with an Invis rune still in hand. Secret have a lot, or rather Liquid have a lot of wards around the area. Both in Server and Sentry, so you need when, to be careful. When they were ahead, this game felt like to me that Miracle could control it in combination with Matsu. But now you need to rely on this Blink Dagger coming up from GH. Like, I feel like the Earth Spirit and the Winter Wyvern are now going to be far more important in these engagements. All so often, it's felt like if you can get through the lane stage, mid one just jumps forward though, finds the Batrider, now turning onto Kuro, they weren't able to find the kill onto him, but the stun comes through onto two, the Fissure's there as well, can they kill him off in time? They're dropping solo, they get the BKB off on Miracle though, and now the Silence is gonna be there for the fall, mid one, he's stuck, he doesn't have anywhere left to go, that Storm Scared, in trouble, he's the cheese, tries to run, the stun again, GH there, try to kill him, and they do! No, we got the deny! The Bloodstone deny to keep him away from that gold, and Yapsor eventually gonna be the one that goes down as well, Ace now trying to escape, Liquid streaming for it again and they are going to find the alchemist uh, it's more than a stream it's a waterfall i would say is liquid pour all over top of them and maybe a bit too bold going forward there without the echo slam it's been so clutch for them in these engagements and yes even having a few moments there where it would have been incredible but they're, they're trying to get these objectives they do get tier two down in the mid lane but obviously it wasn't worth it at the very least as you had mentioned they did get that deny on mid one i mean that was just <laughs> The skin of his teeth, he was able to get that one off and had to use the cheese as well. Yeah. Again. I believe we've evened out now. <laughs> I know, right? This topsy turvy game that we're walking through, it's back to even, which again is going to favor the team that doesn't have an alchemist, but there's also the brood yeah, on the it's other. True. So you it's can a little. Say a lot of the same things, right, from both heroes. But you can see how this fight's up. I love mid one. He's just toying with them, right? He's trying to force out bad ultimates here, trying to get Kuro to maybe solo winners, curse him or something. Miracle, he loses so much HP before that BKB finally gets popped this game. Was a little bit worried, but uh, excellent play there from the rest of the dire side to clean that one up. And you can imagine if they did have that Echo Slam, Yapsor yeah. jumps on top of that Fissure. Suddenly they're both dead, but not having that ultimate makes it that much more difficult to take the fight. Intensity. Commander, right there. 23 to 28. 34 minutes, 1k gold lead. Smoked up now is Liquid. Looking for their opening. Fada's the one in front. The puppy there as well. They rupture him. They have the send back still if they want to use it. 
thinking about it for the moment. They pop the Ghost Shroud. DKB's out. Puppy in trouble. The oh, big the stun. stun. It hits onto two. Can they get away from this one, though? And mid one, thinking about chasing forward for more. They have that flaming lasso as well. Mid one trying to take him down, but they have the Winter's Curse. Buyback from Fada. This fight could be really good for Liquid if they find and control and kill mid one. No buyback. 48 seconds on the sideline. Ace is pretty much the only core left. There's an keep him away. a lot left for Liquid, though. They need to be just a little cautious. Feels very difficult to go high ground with any of these big ultimates remaining for their team. That fight could have gone even worse for Secret if it wasn't that stun there from Ace, though, catching them just before the lasso was about to connect with the Storm Spirit. Buyback from Fata. That hurts them a lot. A 1300 gold cost there. And Roshan, the clock begins in 10 seconds. Will it be another insanely early one to benefit the team that just won the team fight? To watch and wait and see. Does look like it is going to be a two and a half minute rush time. A timer. very long one, so we got plenty of time here. These teams that battle back and forth as Liquid look to be the ones in control now. And a net worth lead in their favor by a pretty heavy margin. It's okay, but we all know at this point in the game, net worth begins to mean less and less, and uh, Dota Plus will be the first one to tell you that. And I mean, what is it that you're really looking towards as this game goes later? I mean, I always feel like you favor hard initiations in the form of a lasso. But on the other side, you've also got the Earthshaker, and then there's the Storm Spirit debacle. Like, as this game continues to grow, where, where do you see it going? Uh, again, I, I think it is the initiations, right? It's all about vision and initiation. And uh, Crow actually went for the 350 health this game instead of the 500 night vision. It's kind of interesting. I feel like a lot of people have been uh, making great use of that talent trying to find those perfect curses. Maybe because he wasn't able to buy into a mobility item, so that's why he didn't go for it. He just has the uh, Glimmer Cape, and he feels like he needs a Lotus Orb to try and deal with uh, the silence. Coming out from the storm, perhaps, if he's worried about an Orchid, or just in general. Okay, I am to have to that, these annoying debuffs. That test of faith cooldown for Puppy as well, so dealing out a little bit more of that damage and heal for his side. This game goes on. This Mid lane again, as we've seen so often. Liquid down here bottom, secret in their secondary jungle. And then on the other side of it, Miracle can just feel free to farm. Interesting. Crow actually just bought a mech all out after looking at that low sword for quite a while as it arrives on the courier in a moment here. But uh, I think maybe he was trying to use the Lotus as like a counter to the Storm Spirit, thinking he might be able to catch him or something. Like a double zip pull mm. sort of a play would have been pretty hype, but. Mech not able to get to see all too much anymore. However, the uh, armor will be pretty helpful against a lot of this physical damage from the Alchemist. We also are seeing the Aghanim Scepter queued up for the Earth Spirit. One of those items that can change a team fight so insanely. Especially yeah. with the saves. I doubt about that. Especially with someone who's always like in the front lines like a Bloodseeker. Uh, although you don't really want to remove him from the fight for too long, if he's about to go down, then big saves like that can uh, turn it. It's an Aeon Disc as the pickup for the Alchemist. Liquid again on the Radiant side of the map. A 6,000 gold lead over the top of an Alchemist. Very sneaky play here. Keeping it in your backpack too. He's trying to only use it at the appropriate moments perhaps or switch it in for now, but not the most common pickup at this point in the game for an Alchemist. I mean, it really speaks about what he wants to do. He just yeah. wants to go farm creeps and not die. Well, it's also that he wants to stay alive in the team fights for constant stuns. Okay. That's the most important thing to me. Um, however, it is a little bit more difficult when he does have the unstable concoction cooldown, so I'm not a fan of that. Well, it is going to be Roshan. Assaulted by Liquid with the send back there. They're going to run in with the Storm Spirit, the immediate getaway, though. Uh, wow. I mean, it's a cool play, right? Yep. Doesn't do much for you, though. As uh, Refresher Shared now picked up here, it's going to be handed to Mind Control. Liquid, once more, going to try to choke out Team Secret, force them into their base. But we've talked several times about this idea of the Storm Spirit and the Chen. You guys may have seen some games in the past where it's quite irritating. Uh, he just keeps zipping around there, especially once you get to level 25, you're going to be looking for the uh, constant auto remnants every 500 units. Extremely difficult to get your creep waves to the base like that. Might need a few more pipes. Possibly just push down a couple different lanes. It is one of the better mechanics for keeping a game alive. Of course, when you're fighting with an Alchemist as well, things get more and more difficult because you can just have that Acid Spray spam. Well, the panel shall be pleased here as the Nullifier does eventually come out. For the Broodmother, one of the better parts about this hero, just someone who gets an insane amount of farm, can itemize very specifically for the game. She doesn't have too many really core items these days other than the Diffusal and the BKB. Miracle jumped on the Silence off the mark. They have the Cold Embrace to keep him alive, saving that BKB charge. 
can see a heck of a lot of farming coming from the liquid side. And Jeez, mind control, what are you doing? <laughs> 0.27k. I mean, he died a lot in that bottom lane, let's be real. He also got very fat very early, too. Yeah. That tends to be the, the bat rider play. Still Aegis in hand. It's Liquid dominating the map, and since we last talked about it, it's now up to a 12,000 net worth lead for Liquid. It's just ballooned up after that one big team fight. Liquid have really not given them another option into it. Yeah, and now Ace seems to be happy with the six slots he's chosen. He's now looking towards an Aghanim Scepter to be handing around here. A couple different options, probably the Storm Spirit, the most game-changing possibilities, but the Necropose also hasn't been able to afford one. Uh, himself on Fada, so maybe a tough call for them. I mean, you can imagine what this is going to look like, right? Storm Spirit zips in, you've got the Echo Slam on top of it. Right. Things are going to die real quick. Zip out again from the storm. This is the creep wave a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bit of a whoops. <laughs> you love to see a little bit of levity on the main straight stage. There's going to be another round of it. But yeah, this is sort of the, the play now, although they need another answer because this is just a tier three tower about to go down. Ace jumps forward, stun onto one. Cold Embrace, keeping him fine and dandy. Ace needs to be a bit careful here, though. That Eon disc has to watch out for the Nullifier. Again, the send back, but the Glimmer Cape, they don't want to bro the Reaper Sight just on that. And it is going to be a tier three tower down, which is going to shut down their ability to control the map that much further. Do we have a Yule Scepter anywhere on Team Liquid? Try and cancel that out. Yeah, so you can actually get him. Uh, currently, not looking like any good answers. Best that you'd have would be the nullifier. If Brood can be fast enough. 13,000 net worth lead. 3 to 31. Mid one. Still just going to be zipping all around the map, trying to keep them in this game. Ever possible. Quite get there? Yes, he does. Yeah, this is the thing, everybody. This is this is what happens now. <laughs> this is what you've signed up for this morning. It is one of the more difficult interactions to deal with, but there are some answers that Liquid have, and you anticipate them making the moves pretty soon. <laughs> and you can just imagine when it gets to 25 as well, how much easier. That, uh, Jeez, you you think you're groaning in the stands? Imagine if you're in the booth. <laughs> Poor Liquid. So difficult to deal with. Uh, a little off the mark. All right, we got some creeps, everybody. Radiant you obviously don't want to be forced into like these pushes where they know exactly when you're coming and everything. So quick, they are just continuing to itemize up here a bit. All right, let's see if they can actually get the nullifier off. Doesn't look. Nope, he's he's very far gone. It's very far gone. Oh, they're pinging this wave. Liquid may be concerned. No, no, geez. Mind Control's way back there, doesn't have Firefly. They do have a glyph if they decide to eventually go in with it. Yeah. Something else to keep in mind here. This Miracle throws out the nice. Both teams feeling good about that prospect. Chen might get an abandon for lack of experience in the next couple of minutes here. <laughs> that is actually uh, <laughs> poor puppy. It's a good thing that doesn't happen on our main stage games. That, that would be very unfortunate. That's true enough. But now with the BKB as well, mid one. Just wants to take no chances at all. But look at Matsu. He's sitting like right there. He's just praying and hoping <laughs> that's where they're going to come. Yeah. Come to me, please. One more zip. I keep seeing you do it. I'm ready with this nullifier. All right, let's see if the storm is going to make it this time. Oh, here he comes. He's jumping. Oh. Matumba Man, he's done the math. He spots him out. Oh, oh. he's not there. The timing is a bit too good in the woods. <laughs> you can see that mid one has actually been slowly refining it so that he has no time outside of the ball. Yeah. There, exactly. You're not even targetable. Wow. Oh, let's take oh, a look perfect. again. Thank the you. instant replay. Oh. <laughs> mid one, look at him. Eight legs. That's a lot of ankles to break. <laughs> I mean, it's still the net worth lead is going to be continued. Eventually, they're going to get to the point where they could push. Oh, he's like. perfect on all three lanes now. He's gotten this. Aghanim Scepter. Coming in. We have a wave. They're fed up. Aghanim Scepter on Storm Spirit as well. They jump forward. There's going to be the Echo Slam, though, in mid one. He's not being sent back this time.
alive, but Tumba Man isolated as well. They roll in with GH, not quite enough damage as of yet. Fossa being brought down low as well. The Silent, they get the kill onto Ace one time through at the very least. As Fata being controlled, he's going to be brought down as well. They both have buybacks. They still have the glyph if they want to try and save this wave. It might be something to watch for. See how desperate Secret are here. They do have this wave, like you said, looking for their opening. They miss it this time. They're going to start to assault the barracks. Using a Bloodseeker Illusion, trying to bait here. Oh, the stun, they throw it onto the Illusion. Yes, in mid one, they don't do anything at all. Matumba Man, Cold Embrace, this is going to be a barracks down. Can play your fun and games all you want, but eventually they will hit your buildings. Oh. But back to the long zips through and... Oh, they have the catapult. However, the catapult wave, perfectly timed here from Liquid. They knew what they wanted, they knew what they needed, and this is going to be the first lane of Barracks taken down mid one. Electric Vortex in, not bad at all. Can they have any follow up? No, he's going to be sent back. I mean, again, there's just no damage to deal with them, though. So Liquid, with all these BKBs, they can just run away. The stun is out, but now in some trouble mid one. He's going to be pulled back in again, the sendbacks. It never stops. Yeah, Matu unable to help there. Trying to run and find this chase for the kill. The Winter's Curse turn around. It's going to be a secondary stun after the fact as they're turning into a Miracle Liquid. They're all on top. Can they kill Ace? They're going to get the kill. No buyback. Two minutes. And Liquid going to go forward for the other Tier 3 tower. No back door. No Eon Disc available there for the Alchemist. And you can only be so cheesy in this game. Eventually, you got to play Dota as Liquid. They do it beautifully. Yeah, very patient. No real mistakes there. They just come to the high ground using the cheese. And Matu uh, able to help secure the first couple kills. Back door is there yet again. Fata, they jump in the Echo Slam again. Can they kill him off in time? 3% is there. Matumba Man dropping low. He is going to die. They find three. Triple for Fata. All right, all right. Oh, Yule Scepter lift up. They found a fourth. A tasty treat. Minty Fresh and Winter Wyvern possibly going to go down. Well, run, or he's just gonna walk away. I guess he's just gonna walk away. Chase, Yapsor is on the hunt. Our spirit buys back as well. They want to kill off Kuroki. Got the glimmer again. Chant totem. Mid one, it's gonna be going for the long zip in. Spots him out again. The glimmer cape making him live. Mid one's actually out of mana. If they can all get here, this could potentially be a turnaround. But it seems like they're just gonna give up Kuro for dead and eventually kill him off. All right, well, a little bit of space there for the creeps. Taking care of some of these structures inside the base. That Roche, it's back up again, and it's a lot harder to kill off those super creeps. Yeah, and that, that actually makes what Curl just did pretty important, right? Like, if he just dies right there, they could have instantly cleared the waves mid and possibly funneled straight in towards Roche. Riverside Team Seeker, maybe try and force out some buybacks from Liquid. But instead, Kuro wastes so much of their time that at this point, they're still just struggling to control their lanes. And back to this beautiful initiation here, the infused Aghanim Scepter on the mid one from the Alchemist, providing setup here. Well, and obviously, they're still in a commanding lead, but you can see Miracle not too concerned at this point because of the damage that was done structurally in the bottom and mid lane. Two racks down, and Secret backs truly up against the wall. Yeah, they have no buyback on the Alchemist for four and a half minutes. Uh, everyone else should have it on the side of Secret. Puppy just needs a little bit more time. <laughs> There's still a chance. They believe in Secret. I mean, it, it's not an easy push into the high ground. We saw it just a second ago. What you can do with that Ags, Storm Spirit, and combo together. But it does definitely feel like Liquid in control of this one as we get ready for another Roche fight. Yeah, it's very difficult when you have two of your lanes uh, down like this, the racks being gone, but at the very least, they have one of the, uh, well, I guess two of the better heroes in the Storm Spirit and the Alk with this Manta Radiance combo. Trying to keep these waves out, no matter if they're, they're super creeps or not. But back to the most important beast on the map, the Roche Pit. Dire scanning around there, Liquid just ensuring there are no secret heroes nearby. And they still kill this very quickly, even at 50 minutes. We did hit another important timing though. It's that level 25 on Storm who's zipping in. Did not go for the pit. Might have been able to kill off Roche. But we are going to be seeing some more of Storm zipping around this place. So they try and hold. We are running uh, a bit low on some of these. 
Five seconds now for Miracle. Five seconds as well for Matsu. So if they can wait those out, maybe they'll find their moment here. Get mind control though. A higher one there at eight seconds. An absolute fresh one. Second as well for G. Go with this Eon. Just he's a very hard Earth Spirit to kill. 3,200 HP. Yeah, that's quite the hero. Oh, hit one, muted. No, he's in trouble. He's gonna die. Oh my goodness, the Nola fire. It finally paid off. Got him eventually. Uh, he doesn't buy back, so it won't be a game ender. But they uh, see if they can try and get this to the high ground. Be the goal here for Liquid. I mean, they were doing that over and over and over again. Do you yeah. think they were anticipating that that yeah, go yeah. for the bounty run? They're just uh, waiting for him. Yeah, I think they were just trying to find that perfect spot. 27 to 36. GH into that 150 GPM talent as well. As we saw, gave up on the Agnum Scepter instead of going for these other items as they are looking at Miracle. It's two heroes very alone right now. The man freaking out as he tries to go high ground. And, and just falls down a couple times. It's fine. And now assaulting the tier 3 tower yet again. Liquid wanting to close out this game number one in what could be a very long day for them depending upon how the results turn out Miracle stun for the moment Fata as well. They're trying to bait some heroes in closer so they can go for the echo But they go for the back line instead the silence in response. There's gonna be the mute There's gonna be the catch. There's possibly going to be the kill as well Buybacks immediately for both of the supports also the storm spirit They try and kill off another the stun gets thrown out Fata just trying to buy some space But GH he was able to get that BKB up miracles down low. That's only gonna be the Aegis Muted again, in some trouble, Storm Spirit, silence forever, can they kill him over time? Yes, no buyback, 86 seconds gone, and as they take this one down, it looks like Liquid are going to be taking game number one. GG is called, Liquid eventually find the win. My goodness. Tail. 51 minutes, but it did feel like it was sort of this inevitability in a way, the early lead that they were able to build. How do you come back in this? I mean, thinking forward, it just shows such presence.